Welcome to the beautiful country of El Salvador, the smallest country in Central America but one of the most diverse in the region. Here you will find volcanoes, beaches, and some of the most impressive valleys you've ever come across. In this video, I will be telling you about all of my favorite places in the country to help make your trip to El Salvador one of those that you'll never forget. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the beautiful country of El Salvador. Today is my last day and I wanted to just take some time to give you guys all of the information, all of the facts that you need to know when visiting this country. Now I've put a lot of hard work in the last 15 days filming absolutely everything that I can to make this informational guide for you so that you can come out here to El Salvador and have an amazing trip. Now in today's video, I'm gonna to touch a little bit about the airport transfers, how to reach your destinations in El Salvador. And of course, we're gonna talk about 15 things that you must do when here inside of the country. Now I'm just wrapping up 15 days and wow this country has absolutely blown me away i wasn't expecting much when arriving due to the fact that the country is so small however man this country is small but it packs a mean punch there's so much to do so much to see so without further ado let's start this video off by talking about how you're arriving to your destinations from the airport. The first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is transportation to and from the airport. Here in El Salvador, there are many different ride sharing apps, Uber being one of them, and there are also taxis that can be found everywhere. However, in my opinion, it is definitely safer to book a private transfer. That is why I booked mine through Tunco Life Tour Agency because I just didn't wanna risk anything at all, especially traveling with all of the camera equipment and laptops that I travel with for this line of work. I've heard many different horror stories from around the world of people hopping into Ubers and getting robbed or hopping into taxis and getting robbed. So one of the things I recommend is definitely booking a private transfer. In about 35 minutes, you can be in the capital city or in El Tunco Beach from San Salvador International Airport and it is literally super easy. The first recommendation is to make sure and visit the Santa Ana Volcano, which is the highest and most active volcano in the country. Every year, thousands of tourists from all around the world visit El Salvador just to climb this volcano. The hike itself takes anywhere between 40 minutes to one and a half hours to complete, depending on your physical shape. And honestly, this hike is suitable for people of all ages, and it is definitely a great family activity. Once you make it to the top, you'll have incredible views of the crater lake as well as Lago Cualtepeque. Look at this place, it is incredible, so stunning. You can already smell the sulfur. And wow, I'm just mind blown. I've never seen a formation like this before in my life anywhere else in the world. The next recommendation is to make sure and visit the capital city of San Salvador. Honestly, many people have a bad misconception about this city and think that it is so dangerous that no one can even walk around it and that is simply not true. Although that was the case for many years, nowadays the city has cleaned up a lot and it makes for a great place to hang out for a few hours, even a few days. I unfortunately only spent six hours in the city and it was nowhere near enough. Next on the list is the famous Lago de Cuatepeque. This lake is also located in the Santa Ana department and it makes for a great place to go and relax after climbing the Santa Ana volcano. Here you'll find many incredible restaurants that offer stunning views of the lake and the surrounding volcanoes. We spent a few hours here having ceviche and some nice grilled meat, but you can also come here to rent jet skis, ride the ferry, and even go wakeboarding if you have sufficient time. Now one thing you have to do before leaving El Salvador is dabble with the street food. In El Salvador, the cuisine is incredible and by far one of the best ways to learn about a culture and a country is to dabble in the street food. My favorite by far were the pupusas, which is the most famous dish in El Salvador. They are small round corn cakes that can be filled with absolutely anything. My favorite are the revueltas, which comes with beans, cheese, and chicharron. I definitely recommend them. Delicioso. While you're in El Salvador, you have to visit El Tunco. El Tunco is one of the most popular beach towns in the country and it is also known as Surf City. Here you'll find some of the best surf in the country and it is also a great place to visit to learn how to surf. 
Surf lessons here can range anywhere between $15 to $25 an hour, including your board rental. So super affordable and definitely worth trying. The town itself is also very cute and relaxed, and it seems to suck everybody in. I actually only came here for four days and ended up staying close to two weeks because it was such a vibe. Now, the nightlife here is also pretty insane too, so if you're looking to party, this is probably the place that you want to visit. Up next is the world famous Bitcoin Beach. Bitcoin Beach is the nickname given to El Zonte Beach because this was where the Bitcoin movement was started in the country. Unlike El Tunco, here you will find volcanic sand beaches instead of stone. However, most people don't come here for the beaches as they're more interested in the Bitcoin movement. Here in El Zonte, you can purchase goods from businesses and even street vendors using Bitcoin. I actually bought this bracelet from a street vendor using Bitcoin and I was left blown away. Literally, as we get done talking, we come across this small little table where this man right here, his name is Danny, actually sells bracelets and artisan goods and he accepts Bitcoin. So uh -huh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go ahead and purchase myself a bracelet because wow, everything looks amazing and why not? Let's use some Bitcoin. Another place you need to visit is the Picnic Steakhouse which is located in the capital of San Salvador. Here you will find a beautiful restaurant that overlooks the entire city of San Salvador and what I liked most about it is that there was so many different fountains, elephants, and just decorations that make for great photos. I definitely recommend visiting around sunset for the best light. Picnic is a restaurant where you can find really good food. Okay. But also they have something special that I want you to try today. Okay. Uh, they have a big, big rainbow slide. A what? very colorful thing. And uh, I want you to try it, leave the experience, and let us know what you think about it. Up next is to make sure and ride the rainbow slide, which is also located at the Picnic Steakhouse. This slide is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the country right now, and it should be on everyone's list. The slide costs $5 per ride, but well worth it. As you slide down, you get amazing panoramic views of the entire city. <laughs> The next recommendation is to make sure and visit the town of Nahuizalco. Here you will find the largest population of indigenous people left in the country and it is also a great place to learn about the history of El Salvador. This town is famously known for their beautiful outdoor markets that are held every single day. If you're looking to buy produce or even some souvenirs, then this is probably the place you want to visit. Now a visit to this town will only take you a few hours, but definitely a place worth visiting. The next recommendation is to take a dune buggy tour through a coffee plantation. I actually did this tour in the town of Ataco and loved every bit of it. The dune buggy ride itself was an adventure, but I also really enjoyed learning about the coffee process, as El Salvador is famously known for its coffee production. You shouldn't leave El Salvador without dabbling into the coffee culture. Salvadorians are extremely proud of their coffee, and it is something that makes the country very special. Did you know that coffee actually takes four years after planting for the first coffee bean to come out of a plant? I had no idea. I thought it was a process that was definitely a lot faster than that. I thought the turnaround was quicker based on how much coffee is consumed around the world. But no, four years. Up next is to make sure and visit Monte Cristo National Park in the northern region of the country. Here you will find some of the most diverse wildlife in the country. But what makes this park truly special is that it is shared between three countries, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. 
I visited the 100 year garden inside the park which is home to over 170 different species of orchids and it was absolutely beautiful and so relaxing. I highly recommend it. Now the sign right here actually says that Metapan is directly in front of us and off to the right is Guatemala. Now here inside of this national park there's actually a very special point that we're not going to be accessing today because well it was in the other direction about 15 kilometers and it's a point where you can actually stand in three countries at once. Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. Now, not far from the Monte Cristo National Park is an island called Isla de las Figuras. This island is famous for having more than 200 petroglyphs that are said to be left from the Mayan people. In order to get to this island, you have to take a 25 minute boat ride on Lake Guija and let me say, that alone is an amazing experience. Last recommendation is to make sure and visit the town of Soactitlan. Up next on the list is the beautiful town of Ataco. Ataco is a colonial town located in the western region of the country. Here you're gonna find a beautiful colored town with murals absolutely everywhere and a deep root in the country's history. Some of the things you can do in Ataco are ride dune buggies through coffee plantations and of course visit the local mercados to get your hands on some traditional Salvadorian food. Si, ¿Sí? me puedes dar un taza de café, por favor? Gracias. Encontramos el café y wow, huele increíble aquí. Los pupusas son lo máximo, pero me comí como cuatro anoche. The next recommendation is to make sure and visit Cafe Albania, which is located in a small town called Apaneca. Cafe Albania is an outdoor park where you're gonna find some extreme activities, such as huge swings, zip lines, and of course, the famous bicycle zip line. Now the bicycle zip line costs $10, but it is well worth it. It is an activity that you must do when in El Salvador. The last recommendation is to make sure and visit the town of Soactitlan. Honestly, there is nothing too exciting going on here, but I really enjoyed my time in this town. There were absolutely no tourists around and it was nice to interact with the local people. This town is also famous for how they prepare their yuca and you must try it before leaving. I want a order of yuca frito. And you, how do you eat it? Sancochada. Sancochada. Let's see the two. 